I'm looking okay. Ah. Sir, yeah. Started. I think we're live now. Yeah, we are live. Yes. Welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure and honor for all of us to be here to have this remarkable conversation with remarkable people. Rashmi, it's over to you to start, and then I'll take over. Thanks, Shia. Thank you. Is Mehal, are you going to show the little uh, introductory slide? Yes. Second for them to show the slide. Yeah, it's up. It's running. Oh, I don't see it. It's, so oh, it's there. It's there. Ah. So, <clears throat> uh, Namaskar and a very, very warm welcome to all of you for the uh, from the Vidya family uh, to this very special webinar. This is our 25th webinar on the Vidya Knowledge Series, uh, which we started about a, a little more than a year ago, just when the pandemic hit us to really connect all our Vidya family of teachers, uh, partners, donors, to learn from so many great leaders like you. And I'm very, very happy that we have and uh, with us a very inspirational founder of Katha, Mrs. Sita Dharmarajan, to share her remarkable story and the journey of Katha. So this journey of Katha is what this webinar is all going to be all about. Gita, if you remember, in the early 80s, I met you um, met you in Delhi when you were when you had just started Katha. You inspired me then, and you inspire me even now with your amazing vision, your work, your ceaseless drive and effort to bring out the most wonderful publications of Indian stories for our children in Hindi and all the languages, and also the most importantly to encourage our children into the reading habit. I remember the quality of the Katha books were outstanding always and the illustrations and the stories were so real that our Vidya children from the early, very early days eagerly looked forward to every one of your publications. You even trained some of our Vidya teachers in your center in the Govindpuri slums in those early days as well. I'm reminded of a quote that I heard from Ira Glass. It says, great stories happen to those who can tell them. Also, I remember your fantastic work to work for empowering women of the communities. You built capacity, you gave them the confidence to be earning members of their family and so much more. It's truly remarkable what you've achieved, Gita. And, as, uh, and the wonderful thing is we share a lot of synergy as we followed a very similar path. We both started in the 80s. We've been working towards our ethos for the past 30 years, three decades, and we're still going strong. <laughs> <laughs> the concept uh, of what Vidya has of working to educate, empower, and transform children, youth, and women with a holistic and a creative education is the vision that we both share. I am a great admirer of your work, Gita, and it's so beautiful to connect with you and the Vita Katha family, and we're really looking forward to a future partnership together. Could I have my slide, please? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's always a pleasure being with you and always a pleasure talking to you. And as always, I think, you know, it's, a, what can I say, a mutual admiration club, maybe. I love the work that you've been doing over the years. And I hope that you have all the energy and the passion to continue with whatever you're doing all these years. So uh, Vidya, Vidya's story is all about inclusivity, inclusiv inclusivity and diversity and high quality education and empowerment. What you see here uh, is a picture of a Sanskriti function which we launched a few months ago from the Vidya Bangalore Center to bring in great artists to teach our children. Uh, so they learn directly from the artists themselves. And it's, it is now, it's a vision, of course it is, uh, it's, a, it's an e-learning that you're doing. It's, a, uh, it's doing the, in a virtual mode, 
But what is amazing is that uh, this is now being followed across all our Vidya centers. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> our Vidya effort is really a wonderful story where we try to bring the high quality education and empowerment uh, in, in diversity and inclusivity. On the ground today, we have 79 projects span India and we impact about 400 lakh children, youth and women and made a difference to thousands of lives and families at more than 10,000 women. It's a movement that we have to continue and work on. This is what we really believe that if every child can get a good holistic education, Every woman gets a chance to be to be have her own right of empowerment, and every youth uh, gets a chance to fulfill his dreams. That is what Vidya's dream is. <clears throat> Next slide. So every member of the Vidya family is committed to what is our, our, our vision, our mission, and our values, which are given below to you, given in the slide for you. And the wonderful thing is that even our students actually live every day by this ethos, and we try to imbibe in them these values and these, so that they can become the leaders of change going forward. That is our dream. We want to create leaders out of these wonderful children who have, uh, are greatly talented and all of us are committed to these, uh, to our vision and our mission. i share the next slide, please. Here we are sharing with you our program Span India. Uh, <clears throat> As it uh, learning from the pandemic, uh, what we are, what we have uh, is that we want to scale the numbers and create a digital vidya, which where we can beam out our classes, especially in conversation in English and in IT, to the rural children from rural schools, women as well as youth. What we are looking for is mentors, volunteers, and interns who would like to join us in this mission of vidya and help us to take this dream to the next level. Next, please. So through the challenge of the pandemic, which have been many, uh, what happened is each Vidya center, each Vidya teacher became the family for their students and made sure that they were aware, that they were safe. They were supplied care packages. They were supplied medications, masks, oxygen, food, phones, and tabs, and now we are pursuing vaccinations across all our programs. And also the next step is to get health insurance for every one of our 15,000 beneficiaries that we have. So that, you know, better health, a better life is what our dream is for all our children. Uh, <clears throat> we have kept in this pandemic fear away through personal counseling and to keep them on their toes with learning. So even during these very difficult times, we encourage giving and staying positive. We are looking always for donations to support with their Span India COVID relief fund. So if anybody's interested, do visit our website for more information and do share this with your friends and family so that we can make so much more possible for the communities that with their works for. Thank you. So this is, uh, it's sort of my wonderful opportunity to introduce our speaker today, Geeta Dharmarajan, really needs no formal introduction. She's a writer, she's a social entrepreneur, an educationist, an award-winning writer for children and adults. She started Katha in 1988, and owing to her deep interest in how children and communities learn, she has to her credit, the creation of the Inter Alia Katha Unique Story pedagogy and earth friendly curriculum that helps make children become readers and leaders. She believes that trans translation is a counter diversive force in India and has made Katha a respected name in literary translations. She's honored with the Padma Shri in 2012 for her contributions in the field of literature and education. Geeta is also named the frugal innovator by the Millennium Alliance set by the government of India and the US and, and is a co-winner of the Business Standard Award for Social Entrepreneurship for the year 2018. Having written many critically acclaimed books for children and adults, Geeta has over 30 years of professional experience which includes her service to the India Today group of companies, the University of Pennsylvania in, and Intact before she founded Katha. We have a lovely picture of Katha here before you. Uh, it's amazing illustrations that you do. I love them myself. Uh, Katha started in 1988 with a magazine for children, 
from the underserved communities. Katha work spans the literary uh, and uh, literature continuum by seamlessly connecting grassroots work to in education and urban's resurgence. Katha brings children living in poverty into reading and quality education. Over the past three decades, through its many programs, Katha has helped over one million children help themselves out of poverty. Well done, Pita. Pita, you have not been well for the past few weeks, but I am so proud that you have mustered the courage and the strength, and you are with us today to share with us your Katha story and ignite our Vidya teachers their passion for joyful education uh, and reading, which is something we all are always struggling with. So we have a lot to learn from you. We really look forward to re reigniting the partnership also with Katha and Vidya from the 80s for greater collaboration and impact going forward. And I'm sending you, Gita, a virtual hug. That's all I can do because you're in Chennai and I'm in Bangalore. Sending a big virtual hug. <laughs> We're very proud also of our wonderful moderator, Shriya, who's right here with us. She's our global brand ambassador, Shriya Krishnan. She's at a prof professional level. Shriya is the SVP marketing and communications head of Anviti Insurance Brokers, CSR specialist and corporate grooming consultant. She's on the advisory board of four organizations and four NGOs. And that's one facet in which she is the former corporate diva and Miss India Universe World 2017. But she has many interests. She dabbles in dance, activism, theater, poetry, blogging, modeling, acting. Is this something you don't do, Shreya? <laughs> I don't sing <laughs> or draw <laughs> or paint. <laughs> you can always learn that at Vidya. <laughs> She considers herself an earth warrior and an event anchor and trainer. She recently co-authored a book titled Words Matter, the language that girls need to speak. The book is a, com com a com completion of 40 words that help the reader choose their vocabulary in a way that allows them to redefine human beings, how human beings are treated, how beautiful. Shriya is always full of enthusiasm, even in the most busy schedule and always finds time for Vidya. She's talented and a brilliant change maker. And we love her as she, and she's a very important member of the Vidya family. So, <laughs> so a few house rules before we start. Kindly post your questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat box. So we look forward to hearing you, Gita. And I over to you, Shreya. And have a Thank wonderful- Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rashmi. It's always so wonderful to take over from you and the energy that you leave on screen is infectious. And of course, we have uh, none other than Gita Dharmarajan, who is such a beautiful storyteller. Even the rehearsals have been full of storytelling for all of us who have been part of it. Uh, so Gita, it's such a joy to be in conversation with you. And I'm going to ask you all about Katha in the form of Kathas only. So can you tell us the Katha of Katha to start with? And how did it spark off and how did it begin? And then we'll get into the various Kathas around Katha. Okay. So, uh, well, uh, where, where do I start with? The, the right at the beginning, in 1988. Completely, completely tongue-tied with your introduction and with, with Rashmi's introduction, I am completely tongue-tied. Maybe it's time to say Tata Bye Bye and go away from it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the Katha uh, story started, I think, in 1987 when I reached uh, uh, Delhi. Uh, but if you really, really look at it, it started when I was a very young child and I was going to my father, who's a doctor. And we used to go into all these villages near uh, Chennai. And, you know, I used to be six years, seven years old. And, you know, he used to show, uh, you know, how to put a, uh, you know, do first shape. So I was the one who was always the first volunteer for him. So I'll be there when he put this little thing and tied up my hand and said, now we have to rush you to the hospital. So I've always been in the midst of, you know, uh, a lot of stories and activism, activism I think. Um, used to go to the temple a lot, used to listen to her stories a lot. So when I came in 87 to Delhi, I felt that, you know, my future was in writing as a as a storyteller in uh, and for children. And I thought that's what I should do. 
but I had just come back from the US, I had been there, and I had seen the value of translation over there. And I found that we were not translating ourselves for our nation. Uh, we, uh, we had uh, lots of stories. I found that the Van Pelt Library in Pennsylvania had more books for my mother to read in Tamil than I could find in Delhi. So where, where were we going wrong? So there were these two questions that were constantly working in my mind. Uh, one was, you know, why are we not translating ourselves better? Why is it I don't know my neighbors? I don't know people across in Karnataka or in uh, Haryana or in Rajasthan uh, through stories and through other ways for not traveling. And if we have uh, non-literacy and children not reading in as many languages, because we have some 1,200 odd languages in which we all joke and talk and laugh and make love in, and then you find that suddenly, you know, it comes to a uh, contribution to children and you know what children can do. There we are with only 37 languages, the tribal children can do what they like, Adivasis can remain where they are. You know, this kind of a division that is there, uh, Chirya, it doesn't happen only with uh, technology. It's been yeah. happening in our country for a very, very long time. So in 1988, when I started, I thought, as a writer, I write some stories. Um, so I had an agent waiting in London for my uh, novel. I had three novels one for little children, one for young adults, and for adults. And I thought, yes, that's what I should do. I had an agent in New York who was waiting for my stories. And then Tata happened. And all of them are like in some box somewhere, I think. I don't even know where. <laughs> and, and that is how Tata happened. Because I, uh, my home in Delhi was very close to a, a government school. And when the children were walking up and down, I would see them and, you know, I visited the school once or twice and uh, they say, Kahani chahiye didi, kahani, kitabe chahiye didi. So I said, okay, since we had a little garage, I thought that, okay, I'll start a small library in the garage. So I started the library in the garage. And uh, so children, when they were coming back from school, they'll all come into this little putty lane that we had, you know, they'll just come in there and they'll come and take, see the books and take the books. And I had somebody from, Lady Irvin College, you know, uh, Anita over there. So she would come and sit with the children and we would sort of look at, you know, what children are reading and things like that. From that, you know, Tamasha came and from that everything came. So uh, that I think would be the real beginning for uh, Katha. Yes, you spoke about four parts of Katha. You know, you spoke about the four segments that Katha sort of split up into and then the four things that it went on to sort of go after to address various needs. So if you can tell us a little bit about those four parts of Katha. So when I, I told you, when I came back from the US, I wanted to do translations. And I felt that the translations that we had, they were after rigid, you know, they didn't have the fluidity. So mm -hmm. the evocativeness that you have in the original story, so when I'm reading, for instance, you know, Annamalai uh, and Ibayam, and I'm reading their stories, I would be crying. I remember when, you know, once I was reading that and another book in English, and I was crying, crying, crying over the Tamil novel. And the English novel didn't touch me at all. So there was, there is a difference between, you know, what you yeah. read in mother tongue and what you read in a language that you are fond of and what you read in English. Okay, so there is a difference. And of course, as many people say, the two languages are different. Our Indian languages are full of emotion and we cry out and we say everything that can be said over there. While the British and the Americans are a little more, you know, constrained and, you know, that the tight upper lip kind of a thing. Yeah, so yeah. We have that. So what I really wanted was to bring this thing in. So there was a whole lot of activity that was starting over there. But I thought that, you know, but Chumpli, you know, if I need to do something for children, uh, and I was seeing the children all around me coming and going, so I thought maybe a small magazine for children. So I started in 1988 with a little magazine for children, which I took across to NCRT. Uh, and uh, Dr. Murli Daran was there and such a wonderful, wonderful early educationist. And she said, Gita, this is very good and you need to do something with this. So that is how the whole story started. But I must tell you, uh, you know, Shreya, I come from Tamil Nadu and I grew up when the... Uh, anti-Hindi agitation was on. Right. And because they're shouting, you know, don't you trust Hindi down our throats. 
I was one of those really vocal, vociferously vocal people out there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so when I came to Delhi, I, I found that I had to speak in Hindi to the children. I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to talk in Hindi to everyone? Uh-huh. So uh, I had a little Maruti, which we had till last year, uh, a Maruti 800. Okay. Uh-huh. So I would go in this Maruti 800 to, uh, to our Kata center. And uh, or whenever I was traveling to other places before the Kata Center came. And I had one rule for myself. However, like I was for a meeting, I had to read what was written at the back of the bus. <laughs> and that was awful. Because I would write up so late for meetings because the J and the E, I will never make out the difference between these letters. And I used to say, what is this? I mean, how are people learning Hindi? It's such a difficult language. I, I was never thinking that Tamil is so, so very difficult for people. Yeah. The difficulty and, you know, easiness of language comes from how quickly and how early you start learning. Yeah, the it's familiarity. Just, yeah. Yes, yes. It's the same thing, you know, when I see children uh, and I see them trying to hold a pencil, the pencil, you know, which is so small in our hands and we are able to hold, it looks like a hammer in their hands. They don't even know how to hold it. But when you give an actual hammer in their hand, they are holding it so comfortably. It is a familiar. I can hold a hammer. I know how to hold a hammer. I don't even know how to hold this pencil. So going, taking children from, you know, a very, very oral tradition into a written tradition and seeing, you know, how children learn and how communities learn became a big bee in my bonnet. I, I, I could not think about anything else. Constantly, you know, seeing children and saying, how are they learning? What are they doing? How do they come from this place to this place? So the whole adventure with the children started in, uh, as I said, 1978. But I started the school in Govindpuri in 1990. And when I started the school with five children, uh, I just, I thought that maybe we'll have, uh, you know, 25 children at least to start with. Couldn't go beyond five, uh, Shreya. Just couldn't go beyond five. I went with popular mothers. I said, mm-hmm. but how can we send them to school? Because they have to work. So I went to see where, where are they working? I mean, how could children be working? Mm-hmm. Naive, I tell you. I was so naive. I'm still very, very naive. Mm-hmm. So went there and I found that four-year-olds were working in making paper envelopes. Okay, then mothers thought they were sending them to school. And actually, when they went there, they were asked to, uh, you know, fold X number of envelopes before they were given their lunch. So for that lunch, the mothers were sending. Average family income in our uh, communities, in the slums of Delhi, 600 to 800 rupees per family per month, per family. So you'd find that, you know, a child like Mitrapal, who was one of our first students who came in, Mitrapal with sores all over his legs and, you know, took him to the doctor, took medicines on it and uh, a lot of uh, steroids were given. So I learned that, you know, being a daughter, daughter of a doctor, I didn't know steroids. Mm. So what, what is it that we can do? How can we cure? How can we mm. keep prevention first and then the cure afterwards? Mm. Can we do prevention? So when all these things were happening over there, I found that the children were not coming in. And then one day, some of the women were going past our school, uh, the little building that we had, uh, five people could be two small little rooms, mm-hmm. and then they were going past it, and they stopped and they said, Didi, can we also learn? I said, Zaro, please come. So they came in for the workshop, and we were doing something for children. You know, I, I had two teachers with me then, Anita and Savita. Anita, I, I told you about, and Savita, who's still with us, and mm-hmm. she, head of our Hindi department. So we had two of them. So they started making these uh, little things. From that, we said, I thought, mm. women can earn, children can definitely learn, but we need to get income into the hands of the women. Mm. So by September, October of 1990, we had started an income generation program on a voluntary basis. Mm. We thought that the women should come and they should learn. So I got all my friends, so all of them as volunteers, so uh, my daughter Tulsi's mother was Manju. Manju said, oh, I can come and teach them baking. So I said, okay, come and teach baking. Somebody mm-hmm. else said, I can teach Bekrame. Somebody mm-hmm. said, you know, I can make uh, making a quilt. So we brought everyone in and we had these workshops mm-hmm. and we called all the women. Now our community is 50% uh, Muslim and 50% Hindu, by and large. All mm-hmm. the other fellows came to. 
Hmm. Only 50 percent. And the Muslim women were not allowed to come out of the house and hmm. uh, come into our center. There's a lot of suspicion. Why are your women smiling when they come out of the building? One once the the uh, uh, Pratan over there <laughs> came in and asked me, "Kya ho raha hai, Geeta Madam? Why are the women laughing? Why are they smiling? Has there am kuch bhi nahi kar rahe? Hum aayenge dekhne ke liye. So he said we are going to come and see. Uh, uh, said please come. So it was uh, to, uh, that was by March. Uh, so uh, we were getting to Holi. So I said, okay, let's all do something. Let's show our men everything that we have learned uh, and all the dance and the music that we are all doing. So all the women and Sarasini Devi, I still remember, she's still with us, Devi, uh, and uh, they all came in and they made these little laddus and they made these cake. We, we had started skill-based uh, learning for them. So uh, because they asked me, Devi, we don't know how to read. Okay, I also don't know how to read, but I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. we always put a blackboard over there. So we brought in a blackboard quickly into the place where the women were learning. And uh, we gave them little notebooks and he said, so they started looking and they put down. So they'll say a petticoat, how to make a petticoat. Mm. Okay, mm. so it'd be six inches over there. They'll put uh, six over there. And I don't know whether it was six inches or six feet or what it is, mm. but they started writing in their hands. Okay, so when it came to baking, they said, Didi, ye to, we cannot keep it in our head at all. One is saying, you know, use three whites. The other one, you're saying two eggs. How can we remember all these things? Notebook. Okay, take a notebook and write in your notebook. Mm. So constantly, you know, pushing them towards, you know, doing things that they couldn't. And so we came to, you know, the words which were loaded words, like uh, dowry, like, you know, mother, uh, like tree, pani. So when you started coming up with these loaded words, they were all politically loaded words. Yeah, yeah. Are crying and they will start thinking, and then those words became attached and I said, like you remember my name, when you see me, you know I'm Gita and I know that you are Shreya. Mm -hmm. So when you see a word, you need to remember that word, how that word looks. Uh -huh. So we started off with these words, the hedge, for instance. So what is that word? How do you how do you interpret that word? So dire, 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 what happened was women started learning, and I mean I'm compressing all of it. Yeah. I, sometimes Shreya, I don't even know whether I spent 30 minutes in Kata or 30 years in Kata. It's like, you know, everything. Now when I'm thinking back, I'm saying, oh my God, how am I going to do it in 30 minutes? Oh my but God. That is how it all happened. And we said the women should start earning. And I wanted 600 to 800 in the hands mm -hmm. of the women. Mm -hmm. so we started our formal teacher education program and our training programs in January of 1991. Mm -hmm. We had uh, four trainings over there. So we said uh, uh, they were all income generation trainings uh, because we had to get money into the hands of the women, right? So it had to be income generation. So A, it was, uh, you know, uh, cooking, baking, because they all like cooking and I wanted baking for them because I thought that was a new thing that they could make and they could make money out of it. Tailoring and embroidery, embroidery, all the Muslim women were there and they were saying, hi, embroidery, I'm such a thing. So a lot of the traditional daily way of doing embroidery was brought in and they started doing it. And we had teacher education as a course. So there were five, cooking and baking, tailoring and embroidery, and there was teacher education. So the first batch of teachers came in and uh, we thought that, you know, uh, slowly the children were beginning to come. Okay. So there we, from five, we went on to uh, 10 and we had one classroom full of 10. We had these small little 10 by 10 rooms mm. which had been built by government for the people mm. and they said rubbish we are not living in this room. Mm. So, mm. Too small so those rooms were given to us so we had five rooms and then the children started coming mm. and our Pradhan Mahendra Rai Ji would come and he would say ne bache hai aapke paas. Ah, can you give us one more room okay take this room and take and slowly 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 we were like the camel and we started occupying all the rooms and poor uh, Pradhanji was left in one small room over there. And then one day we went to him and said, Pradhanji, Amara teachers ke liye jada chahiye. So we put the room. So he also moved out. And our teachers got a room and we got our staff room over there. So by 1993, we had about, um, we had about 350 children with us. Wow. Uh, from the slums and 
uh, from all around. We were in the middle of the slums, uh, four slums, mm. and they all came in. And uh, uh, you know, we had said no textbooks. So uh, right from day one, I'll make you repeat that again, so everybody hears. No it. textbooks. No textbooks. Can you hear me? Shall I write it out? We can tell you no <laughs> textbooks. Okay. All coming from this magazine that I was doing, Tamasha magazine. Hmm. So we were talking about, you know, poverty. We were saying, you know, uh, more is less, less is more. So, you know, we'll go there. And then we'll say, okay, when I have, you know, one chapati and I have five chicks, hmm. then hmm. how much is it? So it is less, right? You, hmm. you have more children than you hmm. have. Yeah. I have five chapatis and I have one child, then more becomes enough for this person. So you right. know, looking at all these things and we had a uh, Ganit Kendra for our children, you know, they acted as, you know, uh, they would sell, uh, you know, pencils and glasses. All the teachers would donate them to sing mm. in front of them. Mm. And the child will be sitting on this side and then the children will come and buy. Mm. And we started match like that. Because you see children, you know, Shreya, Children are so smart with money. Yeah. Mother says, Jao pai ko jo, karu and then she goes off and she's been given 10 paisa. She will come back with that 5 paisa. Yeah. And if it is free, she'll see to it that she doesn't give any money and she brings back the 10 paisa for her mother. So we thought that that was a very, very good way. So our children started off with maths using their innate knowledge of coins and money and using their money job. Yeah. yeah. Financial management was coming without their knowing. So that was called the invisible curriculum in Kata. So we were teaching them math. So when parents came and other people came, uh, I had a principal once who came and he came into our school and he said, this is no way to run a school. Look at your children. They are running around and they are making so much noise. But you should not be making a noise. I said, uh, well, so and so, it's true. But our children don't get a chance to make noise at all. This is the only place. This is their home. So they can make any amount of noise over here, okay? So the children were, you know, we had uh, uh, small mirrors for them and they would see themselves and they would go up their hair and everything. And they would imitate their teachers. And then, you know, we had all our teachers who had graduated from the Kata uh, teacher training program we had there. Uh, so they were coming in. So, you know, the teachers became their favorites. So they look at Chinander, they will look at Sushila and they say, Shailendra Jaisa, you know, I will also wear a pink dupatta like Shailendra or I will wear a, you know, tika like. The, so this whole thing of, you know, uh, what happens in a normal school that we've all seen, what we've all gone through, was happening with children who were living in poverty, where their parents were not able to teach them, where they were getting up at, uh, you know, two o'clock in the morning to go and collect water. And that was happening till very recently, you know, mm. in our slums in Delhi. Mm. So when you have all these things and then disease is so much a part of, you know, whatever it is that, you know, uh, is going around, it's, you know, poverty is linked up to the environment they live in and the environment is linked up to the income yeah. that they have earned True. because they fall sick and then they come from there and they remain in poverty. So this entrenched poverty, the chronic poverty that we see in India mm. comes mm. from this. I think, you know, the enabling cycle that you want for children is never, we start off on the enabling cycle and then a little way into it, we say, nee, 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 nee. exams pass karna hai, ye karna yeah. hai, karna hai. So we move into something which I call schooling and we love the learning behind. Yeah, it true. Is schooling and learning. So when you start off with schooling and learning and then you see the children just flourishing, for instance, okay, so, uh, you have an orange, for instance. So somebody has an orange and I'm teaching longitude. So I start feeling the orange and I say, what is this? They say orange. So uh, it's like kidneys, slices hair. You keep turning the thing and then you show it to them. And then you say, supposing this is Bhumi, then what happens? Do you know that, you know, there are lines over here on Bhumi? And then from that, we were teaching little, little children. We were teaching them plate tectonics. Okay, in... in uh, uh, Hulgulwadi, we had started off with plate tectonics. We were saying, okay, when you have this kind of a thing, and then the thing will be moving. So then you get into the globe. Then you get into, I remember once we had a lesson on dinosaurs. And, you know, uh, when I got out, I saw this little child, um, a four-year-old, five-year-old, maybe four-year-old, sitting there and very, very, very seriously drawing an elephant with eggs inside. So I said, uh huh, in that head. So, uh, she said, 
if the dinosaur can have eggs, the Aati can have eggs. So that opened up a whole discussion for our teachers on what is a mammal and right. why is a dinosaur not a mammal? Mammal. Families. And you know, so you'll find that, you know, constantly when, for instance, the construction was going on over there and you looked at it, they said, huh, how high is this? They say, we don't know, we don't know. No, guess, 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 guess. After guessing, can you look at the shadow? Can you measure the shadow from the shadow? You can measure the height of Oh, can you? So, you know, this, this excitement in children, when it is relevant, so it was the Qatar relevant education for all round development that we started in 1992, and that is what we still have. So it was the relevance for the child that makes a classroom child yeah. It's not yeah. the words child -centric. It is being aware of what is the language they speak in? How do they speak? Can I take their words and put it into what I know? I, that is me, plus one step. If I say plus one step, I am moving forward with the child and it becomes, then I cannot have curriculum. A curriculum I should always have. Curriculum I should always, always have. But syllabus, I can forget. Yeah. I come to the syllabus right at the end. Uh, and they say, bache, bache, you know what? To pass the exam, you have to do these things. And they will come and they will do it. They love yeah. the teacher so much that they'll do anything for their teacher. And you, we've all seen it, I think. All teachers must have seen it, right? But that's so beautiful. So you spoke about three parts, which is Katha, of course, and then the school, and then the women, uh, you know, income generation program. The one more element of Katha. The one more element started off, you know, a uh, uh, No, the one more element was the books. So yeah, the we, books. You no, know, we have books, we have children, we have teachers, and we have women. Okay. Yes. So the four elements. So I've spoken about, I haven't spoken yes. about books. Uh, books were such fun to make, Shreya, they were such fun to make. I would take time off and we used to initially got all the stories from a lot of people, but our children couldn't read, you see. Yeah. So then I gave them a book with, you know, uh, uh, lots of words on a page. Uh, the children would get scared. And so, you know, it was easy to say, I cannot read. And that was the end of it. You know, nobody could bother them. Nobody could go and tell them, no, 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 you can, you can, you do this, you do this. Failure was the best way out of succeeding. Okay. Mm. So they said, I cannot. So the idea was to give them a story in 100 words, give them a story in 200 words. None of the Kata initial stories that Rashmi was talking about were more than 100 or 150 words long. Mm. Nobody was willing to write a story in 100 words. Yeah, okay. Like a story in a hundred words. You can't even begin. It's not even two paras long, Gita. We can't do it. Uh. So I became the staff writer for Kata. So I became the staff writer. I would look at the stories that the children said, the jokes that they cracked. So oh, one day when I was in school, one of the children came and said, Didi, Didi, I'm going to ask you a riddle. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So said, what are these hundreds of cars that are going, black cars which keep going on lots and lots of streets? Uh, lots of streets and lots of uh, black cars. I said, no, I don't know. I don't know. Is it planets? Is it thing? They said, no, lies in the head. <laughs> I had never thought about lies in the head like little Bharati. <laughs> Running in la that dark lanes. Becomes, so that becomes a story, you know. So yeah. you know what the children are excited by, what jokes they like, and how do we tell those jokes as a storyteller? You don't please yourself. You please the audience. This is what you learn from Bharatanatyam. Wow. Mm. The dancer dances for the people in front. Okay. So when I am doing the Eka Hari Lasa, or I am the single dancer over here and I'm dancing, then I am dancing to my audience, to the people in front of me. And I have established a rasa between us. So they become yeah. rasika. Okay. Yeah. So they like what I'm doing. They like the rasi, rasika thing, the rasa, and I'm able to show them. And if they don't understand, I know immediately, ah, so I need a Sanchari Bhava over there. I need to change it. So I say, this is my bird, and I'm showing the bird to them. And I keep on showing the bird like this and this and this. Nobody understands. Then I say huh. this, and immediately my audience. Everybody goes, catches. Yeah. Oh, so I am showing, I'm showing a little uh, pingira, I'm showing a thing, and I'm saying the bird is inside that, inside the thing. They don't understand. 
Then I show them this and they understand. Okay. Children, when children are learning, that is what we need for our children, right? We need yeah. to look at every child, understand what the child is knowing, what is, what is it that she's understanding, not understanding, and give it. Yeah. That becomes a child-centric classroom. Okay. So all these using, you know, the Natya Shastra, I started learning mm -hmm. when I was seven years old. Wow. And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's another that's a, absolutely another <laughs> So I learned um, dance and um, I had my Bharatanatyam, the Aragate film, and then mm. uh, got my Sangeet Natya Academy mm. uh, fellowship and went mm. all over the country, mm. all over India, dancing over there, giving mm. me France, without my father knowing, because my father was so mad. Only my mother. So everything had to be done in big secret over there. So anything that was written had to be kept secret, because my father should not be able to see it. So everything, my father thought that we were all these nice little girls who went to school and came back. And we wore our melak, and we wore. Hey, and my mother would take us, and she would learn us. She said, "No, no, everything, everything you must know." So we started uh, learning tennis because behind my school was a tennis court. Uh -huh. so you must learn ten rupees a month. You don't have uh -huh. ten rupees a month. Uh -huh. So my mother would put money in the Tirupati Umbi, you know, and uh -huh. then she pulled out the money from that and she pay for the uh -huh. for the. My God, we've done some crazy things, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, uh, when I think about the way in which, you know, children learn, in which you know, communities learn, because you see, superstition, stereotypes, they are in our blood. That's it. True. You can't wash them out. Okay. The British came and they said, Babu banana hai, and they made all of us into Babus. And, you know, we all sat one behind another. And then we said, and then, you know, the child who could not read was sent to the back of the class. And the really good ones will be sitting in front. Yeah. It's just, I don't know why. Actually, it should have been the other way. Yeah, actually, we should have only circular classrooms. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so when in Qatar we started, we said we did not have any tables and chairs. We were sitting on the ground mm -hmm. and had all these story books. And we would start off with, you know, what we call a family room. Instead of a zero mm -hmm. hour, we had a family room. In the family room, the children will bring their stories. So mm. this week, we are uh, this this uh, trimester, we had a trimester system. Mm. So right from 1990, we had a trimester. So this trimester, we are going to be learning about the moon. Okay. Mm. So we had a chant kit and mm. from chant. So what should you do? You should go home and talk to your grandmother or your mother or your, anybody who is there. Mm. And you should come back with a story about the moon or anything at all. Mm -hmm. So they come back with a story about the star and about the moon and the thing. And then we'll have the circle came over there. And I remember at one point we got a little uh, recorder. So we put the recorder in the center of the group of children sitting. And then the story was going around and all of us were adding little, little things to the story and mm -hmm. adding and we came to the end. Mm -hmm. And the recorder was playing back. My God, the excitement. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Every child was identifying their voice. And then once we hear it again, then we made it all into books. And so the first library was created with the children's books that they made. Oh, wow. Books, which was written by the teacher, illustrated by the child, and put back into the classroom. So you'll find that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sonia will come and say, um, today we will read my story. So Sonia, Sonia's story will be read by everyone over there. Huh. Uh, see, this theme of creativity that we talk about, and now they are talking about critical thinking, they're talking mm, about yeah, after yeah. curiosity. Okay, it all starts yeah. with curiosity. True. So, Kaisa, come. why did it not happen like that? What if it had happened? Why did she say this? You know, all these questions that we keep asking children, keep asking, she said, to yeah. Prabhu, don't ask these questions. That is where the curiosity is coming from, and that's the creativity, and from that's the critical thinking. I'm running out of time. <laughs> no, I think I, I, you know, I just realized I can keep continuing to talk to you, but somebody should just remind me. I think we have time. If somebody can just drop me a quick chat, I think we should continue this conversation because I'm sure the teachers today, you know, how much they struggle. Like for um, from my own experience of my child. Are we running out of time, Rashmi? Or yes, yes, go ahead. You're yes, wonderful. We're all enjoying this and we're all learning. Thank you, Geeta. <laughs> Thank you. It's, a, it's so much like what I've done. It's exactly what we've been doing. So fun. 
to hear you. You know, when, when I see the enthusiasm of the two of you, I aspire to be like you, um, you know, doing things that have touched so many people's lives. Like I know Rashmi, now I know Geeta, so many conversations in. I think I speak for everybody, all of the 150 odd people listening to us right now and everybody who watch this in the future. I think just the power to give so wholeheartedly into creativity, into what calls you, into passion, into commitment, automatically touches people's lives. And both of you have touched so many lives between the two of you. I mean, it's incredible. The journeys and the stories are incredible. And I think we can have this chat every week. You know, one hour every week we can dedicate and commit to it to just ah, bring out the story. Not like that, Nani's. <laughs> I'm old enough to be a Nani. So, no, not at all. Yeah. Just uh, to hear from your nani. story. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time in the world. <laughs> yeah, for, there is always time for Katha. Always time for Katha. Always time for Katha. Always time for Katha. Yeah. And so, you know, when that story, you know, uh, Shruti, if you look at, you know, 2008, when our, uh, when we did a survey of our communities, yeah, we found that the women were earning 10 times what the family was earning, just the women. So all the training that we had given them and all the things, putting them with export houses, they were going out, they were making soft toys, they were making, you know, uh, napkins and things like that. They were doing a lot of things. And from that, they were earning. And we had 1,600 children at one time, which we just could not accommodate in our school. So we had to sort of divide it up. We got another building nearby and things like that oh. happened, started happening. Wow. Slowly, wow. we did it. Oh. Okay. But the thing is that, you know, we cut back from the 1,600 children because we didn't have the space for them. Oh. Today, our children are in the, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the uh, what is it? Uh, they pass the exams, the civil service exams. Mm, UPSC, they yeah. Mm. They, they become doctors, they become, very, very good, you know, artists because our art department is very, very good. Okay. We say that, you know, children should do what they have to paint and call. So we never gave them report cards. We never gave them just like no textbooks, storybooks. So no report cards. So parents had to come in. We had, you know, uh, five ways of, you know, uh, looking at the fees that children had to pay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they first came in, they would pay, uh, they started paying us five rupees as fees because I said nothing can be given free, of course. Everything, mm -hmm. parents mm -hmm. have to be involved in it. Mm -hmm. So then we said, you know, one rupee, if you come every day to class, next month you don't have to pay one rupee. Mm -hmm. If you are, you know, helping another child in the class and they think then one rupee or next month you don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. You do well in your studies and, you know, your teacher saying, ha, ah, she is improving, then one rupee off. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're a girl, one rupee off. That's four rupees off, right? Yeah. Said if your mother comes in once and your father comes in once, one rupee off. Most children were paying one rupee because the fathers never came. I never came. Never came. So we started the uh, we started the shopkeepers guild. Mm. Uh, Eddie has a thing on mm. shopkeepers. So mm. we started that. Now the shopkeepers guilds are all running on their own. They have their own president and secretary and all that stuff. They come and they teach us entrepreneurship. Because wow. 1995, I started the Qatar School of Entrepreneurship mm -hmm. in 1995. Mm -hmm. okay. Because children had to learn not just vocational skills. That puts them in the place of a pune, of a, of a, a, a blue collar worker. Yeah. If you can go beyond it and they can get excited about more things and they become entrepreneurs, then the moon, they can go. The yeah. world is their oyster. So constantly you see this shift between, you know, where you are and where you can be the potential that you can have. And the same thing happened in 2001. I wanted mm -hmm. IT because 1995, somebody gave me a computer. So uh, put it in the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had started um, uh, getting more and more computers. So by 2000, we had, uh, we 2001, we had 13 computers. Mm -hmm. in okay. And then, um, we had these children and 2001, my God, newspapers are all telling people, you know, roll up your windows because hai mein, and they will mm -hmm. come steal everything that you have. So put up your windows. Mm -hmm. And I was outraged. You know, Kata has grown because of outrage. Kata yeah. has grown from frustration to fears to helplessness to outrage. How mm -hmm. dare people do this? How dare yeah. people do this? How yeah. can government say this? How can media do this? How can anyone? That, you know, is the driving force. That's why you never grow old, uh, Shreya. Because yeah. you're constantly angry and you're saying, hey, to, bilkul nahi hona. 
I will not allow it to happen. Yes. You are constantly. So immediately, 2001, we started what we call the Tamasha Group. Tamasha, I told you, was our element. And yeah. she is the magazine. So Tamasha came in and it was her roadshow that we had. We got permission from government to stop in 10 places so on the street. Mm -hmm. And we set up these children and they came into education. And then we put them into a nearby school, which met their uniform and all their needs. Mm -hmm. But I remember the first day I collected, you know, some of these children. They were from Rajasthan and from uh, Bihar. Mm -hmm. And I them into our school and they uh, you know started asking Acha, bade hone ke baad kya mm. and they were all saying teacher 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 mm. and we were in that room where all the computers were then one child says Mujhe computer banna hai. Okay. and then after that the three or four other children said Mujhe computer banna. okay what can you do to become a computer okay come sit and so the children were coming in and they were sitting over here and every day we were bringing them in. Every day they were sitting at the computer and then they were getting into it. See, there is no limit to what children can learn. That's why sometimes I feel very sad when some teachers say, they were cool hai mere bachche. You know, they can't learn anything. They can't do it. Not with their teachers, not at all. But there are some teachers like that who will say, you know, we can't. We can't teach these two people. You are a non profit you know, you teach them and then you bring them to my school and then I will take them. But that's not the way. The yeah, that's not the attitude. The child has the potential. Yeah, but every child can learn. It's how you approach it. Learn. Exactly. Yeah. So if we go with that and... Uh, also so beautifully inclusive that is because there, there are no stereotypes. Every child can learn. It's, it doesn't matter who the child is or what the child is. Every child can learn. So beautiful that is. That thought itself is so beautiful. There are questions coming in. I'm going to pose these questions to you. Okay, I just uh, want to say one little word about yes. the 300 million challenge. Yes. Uh, I'm so happy to say Vidya is now a partner of the 300 million challenge. Uh, this started just before the uh, COVID came. Mm -hmm. And there were 300 million children in schools, out of which by all reports, 50% could not even read to save their souls. Oh. To save themselves. They just could not read. We found in some states 21% dropout in class one. So the 300 million is a citizens challenge where mm -hmm. we are saying we have to make government work and we as citizens, if we take up one child and inspire one child, yeah. I think, you know, our country will become literate and all our children will be able to read at mm -hmm. So that is the hope. And I'm so, so happy. And I thank Rashmi and all of you for joining the 300 million uh, challenge. I pledge to. I, I do too. Everybody, everybody, pledge. Pledge. <laughs> everybody pledged that one child challenge and also to all the teachers who are here, the life and future of children uh, is, you know, so entwined because all of us, even I remember my teachers so fondly who've had an impact on me and I think they stay for life, you know, your teachers yeah. stay for life like yeah. your parents. So it's so uh, beautiful to have that relationship with children. Yeah, so I have I have uh, three questions. Maya says, it's so incredibly fascinating to see how the threads of translation are tying and untying themselves in Katha's practice. It's not just about literal translation of text, but also throwing light onto the translation of experience of joy, of wonder, using an audience to teach longitudes and latitudes to children in any language they can understand easily. Reminds me of the celebrated Tamil writer P. J. Mohan's story, Periyama's words and how translation makes the varied experience of living universal. Thank you so much, Geeta. This has been ex exceptionally instructive and illuminating, and there's a little heart at the end of it. Uh, so then there is uh, Raf Rafat Naz who's asking, how do, how do you engage children during stories or indulge them in critical thinking? I think you know both of these questions are uh, really speaking connected because the story is something which every child loves and likes to read and likes to listen to. Shavana Shakti in India is one of the first things that we develop yeah. because we all come, most of us are coming from in rural tradition. Maybe our grandparents were not able to read, uh, where they didn't go to school, and then the parents are sent to school. Maybe in our generation, there are some parents who are now going to school. So you'll find that Shavana Shakti is something that is highly developed in most of us. So when storytelling comes in and you start telling the story, the story develops with the 
ability to ask a question. So you ask why, why did this happen? And that is the basis of critical thinking. Mm. Being able to ask the question, the right question. I think it's not the answer, it is a question. So if you indulge in your children to ask the question, if we have the patience for a child when she is trying to put her words together and get out that question in front of adults, mm. I think that the story and the mesmerization of story and the way that story, you know, impels and compels us to come into uh, problem solving. Because every story has a problem in it. Otherwise, it's not yeah. a story. Yeah. Even if, you know, there was a king and then a queen and then the queen died, three, three sets of words, it's a story. Right? Yeah. yeah. So every story has a thing. So if you leave it open-ended at the end of it and you say, okay, what do you think could have happened in the last question? Can we all try and see what is going to happen? What do you think happened to this girl? What happened to this little puppy which ran out? What happened to, you know, this moon and the stars out there? So when you ask these questions and we become the child as a teacher, the child also interests and we have what we call a rasik. A rasik. So then I become that as a teacher, I become the rasika of the child. Yeah. I am willing to listen to the child and the child's story and therefore I become the rasika. So when we say that, you know, story, it is not just storytelling. It's the story per se that we're talking about. Yeah. The story's ability to ask a question, the story's ability to be, you know, even when open-ended, allowing you to think, allowing you to say, what would have happened? Why did it happen like this? I think, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think it does because it talks about problem solving, critical thinking. So all of those are connected. So just get the child engaged into the conversation and I think they'll pick up because also I know these children pay attention and they love to listen and absorb. So, you know, it's a beautiful ex experience. Yeah, Arvindit Kaur asks, did you get support from your family and were there any obstacles which you crossed by which they help? Or is it you and the Katha people's journey itself kindly enlighten? My sincere gratitude to your efforts. Thanks. I could not have done anything without my family. I never talk about my husband, but he's been with me right through, right through, right through. And uh, if you say there is a woman behind every man, I think, you know, some of us who are, uh, I think, lucky to have a man behind us are able to do very well. My in-laws, Appa and Amma, both of them are not here anymore. But they, you know, when we didn't have any money in Qatar, it was a family which came in and said, you know, we can give you the money and we can sort of, uh, we will help. So most of the time, uh, we were in a position to carry on with the work. They said, Gita, whatever you're doing, you continue to do and we will find the money. So even, for instance, my grandmother, uh, you know, when she was dying, she had saved 17,000 rupees and she gave it to me and we found that into a Bhagwati Amal Trust and, you know, we put that money in over there as a trust. Okay. So, uh, I lost the connection. No, we can hear you. Okay. Hear you. Yeah. So, uh, so you'll find that, you know, everyone in my family was very, very invested. Everyone, for me, you see, my mother's voice is the voice I always hear inside me. So I call my mother Akka. Okay. Mm. And uh, Akka and, means uh, eldest sister for Akka those of you who don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, I used to call my mother Akka. And Akka would, uh, every time, you know, when I'm trying to do something or I'm thinking of something, I'll hear my mother's voice inside me saying, In the day, Sariya. Uh, is this the way you should be doing it? And you know, constantly this voice inside me. And I think my mother is right inside me all the time. So uh, so I you'll find that you know this thing of growing up in a community of women, my grandmother, my great grandmother, I remember my great grandmother, uh, my god, she was a widow when she was 12. And and then we all saw her and we were we didn't have the courage that she had. Mm. So you'll find that, you know, women in India are never, uh, you know, uh, weak. We are yeah. not at all. We are sabla. 
yeah. and we can move forward and say we have it in us. Sometimes they put it behind and we've done this, I've done that, and put us into a box and put us, and then you'll come out somewhere. You'll come out somewhere, right? And you'll be talking. And if we can do that for all our girls, ah, yeah. ah, incredible. I think it's going to be incredible. Incredible. Abla nahi sabla. That's going to stick with me for sure. <laughs> and I think there's one last question. It's a very interesting story, but what is it that inspired you to do Katha? I think uh, you spoke about it initially, right? About your growing up years and your childhood and looking at children and learning and education. So that's, I think, the question. Okay. I think, you know, now that you ask me, I feel that, you know, I went to a missionary school. And I had Sister Nesson over there. She was our headmistress. I always say that my parents gave me the wings, but she taught me how to fly. Wow. She put in these feelings of kindness, of sharing, of caring. I remember going uh, when we were living in the uh, in the villages and in the rural areas of Tamil Nadu. I remember going to a missionary and to, into a missionary hospital kind of a place and thinking, this is where I want to be. I'll study Kathagar. But this is where I was. So I think the inspiration, uh, my grandmother, for instance, I used to go with my grandmother to what we, what was called the TUCL, the Triplicane Cooperative. It was called the Cooperative. It was a shop. So outside, when you came out, there would be this long corridor, a darkish corridor, and there'd be all these bags, you know, the pony, we used to call it. Mm, big, uh, yeah, the sacks. Ah, yeah. uh, gunny sacks. So they'll have the gunny sacks, and all of us had to put one handful of whatever we had bought. So if you bought rice, you put one handful into the rice bag and if you bought sugar one, if you bought dal one. And I always remember telling my grandmother, Amma, Amma. I used to call my grandmother Amma. My mother was like, Amma, 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 I want to draw. And she said, you know, you need big hands to give. So she said, learn. First grow your hands before you can give. So I, I was so thing saying, why are my hands so small? Why can't I give? I used to keep putting my fingers like this to see whether they'll grow. And I can have big hands to give. So I so then my grandmother would say, okay, take it with both your hands and give because your hands are small. So being generous, being able to give, being able to just, I don't know. I think the joy that you give from giving, uh, um, that inspires me. Yeah. I think all our children inspire us by, you know, and the women, the grit, the grit that they come with. I don't have the grit that our women have. Yeah. I don't have that passion that our children have. Kuch bhi aap bolenge, kuch bhi aap karenge, they will come and they will have an answer for it. Kyo, aisa kyo nahi kar sakte? When I was talking in, in my stupid Hindi, mm-hmm. and they would come and say, Di, aisa nahi baat karta. Aisa baat karna. Ye kya shabd hai? Haan, ye wala shabd ko mat istamal karo. Haan, kuncha shabd istamal karna. Ye wala shabd ko istamal karna. You know, I always used to get mixed up between gumke and gumake. So I would always say gumake is gumake. And they will all laugh at me. And they'll all be saying gumake, gumake. Whenever they see me, gumake, gumake. Oh, God. So lovely. can come from all different places. Absolutely. Absolutely. Devi Nair is asking, how do we access the books published by Katha? I think that a lot of people would like to know. Okay. See, they are supposed to be in the bookshops and they yeah. were at one point of time. And all these big publishers came. And Kata being one fiercely independent publisher, we were pushed out of the market. Okay. okay. Literally pushed out. We have all these lovely books. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can come to the Kata website and we have the books.kata.org. You can go there. You can buy anything. You can join uh, 300M. All of you can join 300M. And yeah. we have 100 books in seven different, 108 books in seven different languages, which are coming up. Okay. Yeah. So you should be able to read. So you can read Abhayar in uh, seven different languages. Wow. And you can read Kabir in seven different languages. Okay. We are introducing Kabir right at an early age because we believe that a child learns and understands when she wants. This is, there is no exam in reading the story. Okay. You do not have to know and understand this year. Those years ke baad they come back and say, oh, that is what Kabir meant. Enough. Yeah. yeah. We have created a ancha insan banne ke liye kya tarika hai, kya rasta hai. That we have shown the child. And I think that is the most important. Absolutely. The last question is, where can we catch this? Uh, this session's on the 
YouTube channel and we'll continue to stay on the YouTube channel of Vidya Foundation so you can go watch the whole session on it so some people wanted to know that with that uh, it's it's been such a beautiful session I don't want to end and the questions continue to come but I am aware of time I am conscious uh, we'll come back to more if you want to a little later but Rashmi it's over to you and Geeta ji thank you I think you've inspired and touched everybody in so many ways today and when I spoke to you before, I knew this was going to be a stellar session. I had to do nothing in terms of preparation. I just handed you the stage and you just so beautifully enchanted us with the Katha of Katha. Thank you. Thank you. We talk to you all the time. <laughs> the yeah. best way. Best way. Thank you, Shreya. You were fantastic. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. And Rush me over to you. Geeta, we have no words to thank you. It was so inspiring to hear you because I actually lived through exactly what you were saying. In a similar way, I started with five girls, similar way, but what I love is your courage, your, the way you brought things across. You had a confidence to be on the opposite, you know, the opposite thing of what everybody else was doing in those times. It was so hard. It must have been taken a lot of courage to do what you do. And your, I have a cousin who lives in, uh, in Dharamsala and she says she's got every one of the Katha books and she's distributing it to children from the poorest schools there. And she's, you're the favorite, Katha is her favorite. And she says, Rashmi, the illustrations, the quality, the stories, so it just speaks volumes about you. And uh, we are really proud. We're really looking forward to being part of this 300M and taking things forward. I'm feeling so bad that we haven't yet connected in so many years. So let's not waste any time. Yeah, no, I do what I do. No, no. And yes, we're not going to leave you. And we are so inspired. And I'm sure this we have a lot of questions from our teachers. Maybe sometime you can do a little workshop with just our teachers. So they can ask. They My email ID is very simple. So anyone can write to me. It's geeta at katha.org. And they can write. And I will answer to the best of my ability. One last question before we let you go. What's your big future plan? Future plan for Katha. <laughs> yes. I, you know what the UNICEF says it's going to take 50 years to get universal primary education mm. I think all of us Rashmi, all of us Vidya, Kata, all of us should say if you reduce it even by 20 years or 10 years if you say by 2030 we will get it or 2040 we will get it I will not be around but I'm sure I'll be up there somewhere and I'll what be jumping you? around <laughs> but I'll be jumping around to see what everybody has achieved in India and how we have gone beyond the naysayers and we've gone beyond, you know, people who know everything. I don't know anything, but people, there are lots of people and they really know. I mean, I respect their uh, and value their views very much. But I think that as people, uh, as citizens of this country, we need to pick up this challenge. And my only hope is that, you know, all of us, not just Katha, all of us pick up this challenge. We pick up this one child whom we can sort of teach and who and teach child, teach a child. And that's all we need. That's all. That is my only, 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 only thing. Lovely. Join me in. Let's yes. do it. We'll all yes, do it let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Seriously, it's kind of movement of that. Do it. And what the NEP is saying, actually, you've done. And Vidya has done because exactly what they're saying now, yeah. what how to teach, it's come now on paper and in action, but you've shown it, you've shown the way. So Geeta, thank you very much. We wish you all the best of health. You're very precious to the world. And we really hope that uh, we are looking forward to very close association now with Katha going yeah. forward. Yes. And thank you from the entire Vidya family and Shriya, thank you. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. And Geeta ma'am, you should read all the comments uh, be uh, before you sign off or after you sign off. Yes. The chat is full of beautiful comments. I'm sure you'll enjoy reading them. We're all talking about, yeah. The yeah, how, how inspiring the session was. By your, show, by your beautiful stories and your yeah. thoughts. And how, how beautifully you demonstrated like a real dancer with your hands yes. and your... Both of you dancers. Both one OTC, one Bharat. Out of it and you remain. <laughs> it go out of you. Wonderful. Beautiful. So good. Thank you, Geeta. And look forward to your visit to Vidya in the near future. And we'll come and see you in, in Chennai. Yes. Thank you. So well and thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. And thank thanks you. to each member of the audience. Thank you so much for 
be here all the time and listening to me. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful audience. Bye. Thank you. Thank Take you care. so much. Thank God you. Bless.